This is the hackathon showcase. Um, we're going to have two people demonstrating their tools and what they've got. Um, so I'll just briefly introduce it. We've also got two judges who will be asking the predominant amount of questions when we get to the question period, but anyone else is free to answer, ask questions as and when we go. Um, just to kind of run you through the format as to what we're going to have, each team will have 15 minutes to present their tool, and then there will be five minutes for Q&A afterwards. If you've got any further questions after that, by all means, grab the teams and you can discuss that. Um, our two judges are Justin and Maxi. Uh, starting with Justin, Justin is, according to the notes that I've had scrolled in front of me, um, is an active Ozint researcher. He runs Ozint Framework and he's a CFP review mentor. I'm hoping that's all correct. If it isn't, just smile and nod. Um, and Maxi runs Tools Watch. Um, moving straight into our teams, we've got um, RTL researching and they're going to be discussing an API for free SMS receiving services. And I'll hand over once I've switched his mic on. Thanks very much. Okay. I think the mic's on. Can you hear me well? Should I put it closer? That's fine. That's fine? All right. So, um, first time participating in any kind of contest here at DEF CON, so um, not a real programmer either. So trying to uh, participate for the first time in an OSINT hackathon. The idea that uh, we come up with, where we're a team with two people, I'm Brad and there was Lynn, we both tried to code together uh, on this project, is we had the idea that um, to provide an API for, uh, as a service to other uh, web services, in order they can, um, as a countermeasure to detect fake accounts, fake accounts, fake news, Trolling, it's, uh, it's always been a big thing uh, on the interwebs. Uh, suppose it's hot news nowadays as well. So the idea is the following. So there's a lot of web services. Reagent. Or I can... Oh. Sorry, sir. No, no. I'll use this one. Yeah, you can talk into that. Either way. Okay. That's good. Put it down a little lower on you. Hello. I can put it up. Here, here. Okay. This is better? Oh, okay. I can hear myself through the speakers now. I suppose it's a good sign. <laughs> Um, so basically, upon account creation on a lot of platforms, nowadays you have to provide a uh, cell phone number, um, which should be a valid one, because often they send an activation uh, message to you, an activation code. So you should receive text message on your phone and then type over the code on uh, the sign-up form in order to complete the sign-up process, right? Now, for a, for a person who generally wants to create a personal account, he puts in his phone number, create creates a new account on the platform, it's no problem. But there are also people who want to just create an account, but they don't want to provide their, their own phone number for specific reasons, or they want to create multiple accounts, so they need uh, to have multiple phone numbers. And there's web services out there um, that allow you to read received SMS text messages to their specific numbers. Uh, I'll show you a few examples of, of those uh, web services, so you know what, uh, what I talk about. So these like these dodgy looking websites like uh, receive and sms.com. I mean, I'm not saying that they are performing any like illegal or really dodgy kind of stuff, but a lot of people use them for dodgy reasons, I suppose. So basically you pick one of the phone numbers, uh, let's go to Switzerland, uh, and then, yeah, then you can see, for example, activation codes being sent to this specific number. Um, it could be interesting. So what do we want to do? We wanted to create a tool which basically scrapes a predetermined list of these kind of websites, scrape them for their uh, phone numbers that they offer uh, on the site that you can read the text messages from. Um, yeah, that's another one of those one. And put all these in a database, like a small database. And once the scraping is done, it's in a database. The idea was to provide an API, uh, so uh, some service who is not necessarily running the database themselves, they could, but then they have to run the scraper themselves as well, could just query uh, the database through uh, 
to an HTTP GET uh, command and then see whether a phone number is known in that uh, specific database or not. If it's known in the database, then it's highly likely, or it is, like with certainty, a, uh, a person who is trying to set up an account using one of these free uh, text messaging services. Depending on what kind of platform that you are running that you want to do fraud detection, that's not desirable that people put in uh, fake telephone numbers or telephone numbers that they are not the owner of. So that's why we created uh, in the few minutes time between all the interesting talks here on DEF CON, uh, a tool called Free SMS Detector. Um, basically, yeah, we even had a little bit of time to put some basic documentation in there. So it's based on Python 3. Uh, you can clone it. It's all on GitHub, I suppose. Um, yeah, the, the GitHub repo link will be um, yeah, available afterwards on the Recon Village website as well. Uh, or you have to watch the video again. Um, so there's two parts. You could um, like uh, run it yourself and provide an API to others, or you could run it yourself and not use the API, but just use the Python component. So we, we split it up. So there's actually two components. There's a the crawler part, which could of course be improved if you have your own idea of places where to find these malicious telephone numbers. You could easily extend this and add your own uh, crawling uh, to the script. Um, and there's the API part. For, so for the API part, because that's going to be uh, uh, probably the most interesting, because for that you don't have to run anything yourself. You just uh, need to use uh, the service somebody else is providing. So the idea is that you do an HTTP request to uh, a server running this script. I'll give a small uh, demonstration. So I'm not sure if you can read the URL. So basically you just do an HTTP GET and then you provide a phone number uh, attached to it. So just be careful that the phone number is URL encoded since uh, a plus or a space or a parentheses in, in, in the URL uh, should be decoded, uh, otherwise the data is not passed on to the script. So if you just, it's pretty straightforward, if you run, uh, <laughs> first of course have to launch uh, uh, the web API, which is in this case on a local host. So I'll be firing it up. All right, that will be better. So basically you just query uh, your number that you want to query and then it returns true or false. It's just as plain simple as that. Now, for privacy issues, a service like a service who wants to do this kind of fraud detection might not necessarily want to um, expose their new account creating uh, new accounts that being created. They don't want to dis uh, expose their the phone numbers of the new users. So there's a second method you could um, format the phone number that the user has done as a specific format. Uh, so you remove all the spaces and the parentheses. The format is called e. 164, and yeah, they have fancy names for that. And then you just make the MD5 sum of that, the hash, and then you just uh, throw that hash in, into uh, the web API. So that way, uh, you only get uh, a true result if that same hash is also uh, in, the, in the database and present. Um, just to show you, yeah, for, for debugging purposes, how the database structure looks like. So there is uh, yeah, MD5 hashes, telephone numbers, and when it was crawled, and on which, um, and on which uh, URL it was found at, at the time. Um, so quickly show you uh, the crawling part. So this is the SQLite database uh, that runs in the background. There is, at this moment, as there on the bottom, 84 different phone numbers uh, present. Uh, now if you look at unique ones, because we don't throw away any data, uh, there's 25 unique ones at the moment. So if we, for example, would launch the crawler, Let's see, you know what, I'm gonna take it straight from the documentation. Let's see, so to populate the database, so we want, once you have cloned the project, uh, come on, once you have cloned the project, uh, it's just as simple as following the instructions on the GitHub page, it's, uh, don't require any Python knowledge, but it does help. So if we launch the scraper now, so it scrapes a few sites, yeah, some debugging output as well. So as you can see, the telephone numbers have sometimes dashes, sometimes they don't. Um, if we now go look at the database, hopefully, so we have 84 now at the bottom. If I do a refresh, I okay, get 107, so there's more entries in there, good. 
if you look at the, the unique ones, so there's no un new unique ones collected, no, because I run it this morning, so the chances of having a new number on there is uh, quite small. Um, let's see if I missed something. Uh, so go over it. So that's basically the idea to provide a, a very simple script that uh, could help you detect um, fraudulent sign up uh, for your web platform. Um, what are, what are the uh, possibilities in the future? I mean, this is very basic. It's not extremely extensive. This has all been made in a few hours during the most awesome event of the year. So bear in mind. Uh, and there's casinos and drinks around it as well. So these are all like working against us as, uh, as a factor. Um, but you could extend, I mean, if you think it's useful, you could extend it with uh, other phone numbers. We are, uh, we have some version of generic regular expression that gets any kind of phone, num phone number automatically from any kind of HTML text or anything like that. Um, it's kind of buggy at the moment, but we're fixing it. Um, yeah, I think that pretty much concludes it. So I understand if there's any questions about this, now is Q&A. Cool, no questions, awesome. So um, will it work for all the carriers? Yes, I mean, it's um, basically the input of the database is um, predefined web pages. So we have a list of web pages, quickly show you. So we put like four websites in here. Uh, that these are services that are for the moment hard coded in so you could i mean they're they're infinite these services there's not hundreds of them i think maybe 20 50 40 just put yes and the, and those will be scraped and those telephone numbers put in the database uh, that's the idea so will you detect all possible fraudulent phone numbers not at all i mean there is um, ways of getting a temporary phone number if you pay a small price but a lot of those um, people who make a fraudulent account they're even not willing to spend 20 cents or anything for two reasons. One, it costs money, as little as it is, but if they make 100 bots, it costs uh, gradually more to spend the money, but also because it leaves traces. As soon as you um, pay something, it's very difficult to, to stay anonymous. So that's why they just want to use the free numbers. I mean, most people are lazy. Like, I mean, as a scripter, I'm lazy as well. That's why I script, because I don't want to do this stuff manually. Thank you. Okay. okay, now to introduce the next speaker, 
Um, I've got John Servant, who's going to be introducing Reconning Module for Automatic Extraction of Information from Web Pages. Okay, over to John. So I don't know if, if anybody's played around with the tool uh, Recon NG before. Anybody seen that? It's it's one of my favorites. Um, it works works really good. What I like about it is it puts information in the in a database so that the other tools or like their modules that, that can be added and they can use that same information. So so what what I have here is 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 not something new. It's it's like a spider, but the, the concept is that it just helps add more data into the database. And I'll, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, so what it does is you basically type in like the, the website that you want to scan. So it's going to basically open up the web page, go through there and parse out all the hyperlinks. Let's see. So I'll just try eBay.com for example, and oh wait, hold on. I have to select like there's an option like if you're using a Recon NG, you would import all of your previous data if you wanted to. So. All right, so to kind of go up to the top here to show you what was going on. The following unique host names were grabbed from from the web page, but we don't know which one of those domains are ours. Um, so the way that I'm doing it right now is to search the the base of the domain eBay.com. All of these fall within. The base domain that you added, so you know that those are your your domains, um, and so then it gives you an option of the the remaining domains. It gives you the option: Do you want to search each one of those for host names? So that's kind of what all that is. So your your options here are: If we want to continue the next scan, so this this next website is eBay Classified Group. That looks like it's eBay. So you would hit three to continue my next scan. And so then it's gonna scan that web page and pull back more hosts and stuff. So right here you can see where it started scanning. Um, 56 hosts have been identified so far and then 25 of those belong to your organization. So this next one, um, stubhub.com was probably a link to another web page, so you don't wanna scan that one. Um, so you hit four to skip to the next one. eBay.inc, yeah, that looks like it's ours. So you continue your next scan, hit number three. And so you can see it's like it's it's found some additional hosts and stuff. Um, and this process goes on for a while. The thing is, is the nice thing is, is that you could save it in the database. So once you do this, um, it takes a little bit of knowledge about your domains, but chances are, like once you see the domain, you kind you're like, oh, okay, yeah, that makes sense. But what I would like to do eventually is to not only like say this is Facebook. Everybody knows what Facebook is, but let's say it's some other domain. It would be cool to be able to pull um, information from. Um, you know, who is to see who the domain owner and stuff like that is. So if you're doing a pen test on somebody else, it would give you the additional information. Um, and then you can also use this if you're a company and you're wanting, you know, we're, we're pretty, I work at a large company and people are creating websites that I don't, we don't even know about it sometimes. It's not supposed to work that way, but um, it does. And so if you have this whole database of all your host names out there and somehow somebody adds a new one, chances are you, you'll be able to find it with this. Um, Recon NG also has, it has like some DNS brute forcing, a lot of other things, um, but this just augments that data. And so the, the other features that I'd like to add, um, I didn't get a chance and it was a lot going on, but 
I, once we get all these web pages that we know that are ours, um, Recon NG also has an option to add domains. So this would automatically add it into the, into the domains. Um, it would automatically add all the hosts, obviously, host names. But I'd also have like um, an option for scanning all of those same pages for the email address, um, which I, th I think there might be a module in there already that does something like that. But this one helps you make sure that you get all the domains if you don't know about them. Um, and then, you know, add some Google hacking and stuff, you know, just, let's see. And then search for file extensions. I mean, like I said, a lot of this stuff has been done a hundred times over, but this was this would just be a tool to embellish the, the data inside of a you know tool that already exists, which is cool about that is that the other people who write modules can then use that same data. So and that's uh, that's our project. This is my uh, co-worker from uh, Costa Rica over here. Sylvia, so. All right, thank you. Ever any questions? All right. Um, you know, so I'm not actually using any um, any kind of nmap type of stuff. It's it's purely going at the web page and scrubbing the web page for information. But the thing is, is is inside a Recon NG. You can run those in map scans and figure out what ports are open. So that's why, you know, I like it as a module. So, yeah. Thank you. All right, thanks. Um, and there's the libraries, by, by the way, that I'm using inside. So. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm about to. You're gonna be the first uh, person this weekend. Yeah. There you go. Perfect. Awesome. Nice. Yeah. The next part starts at 2:15. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Whenever the judges are ready, I will ask them to come up to. Announce in a break. Yeah. Okay, they're going to go away and discuss things for a few minutes and then they'll be back to announce the winner in a short time.